How's it going folks? A little bit of a uh, harvest clip for you guys today. Just looking at these sweet potatoes. So I need to get in there and um, yeah, dig these guys out because I want to pop some more cauliflower in. I popped these guys in the other day after feeding up the bed with some compost and some um, slow release pellets and that sort of thing. And I've actually got the other camera out here. So um, we'll pop this camera on and I'll start taking off the cage and we'll start hooking into these purple sunshine and what are they called? Hawaiian sunshine sweet potatoes. So to begin with, I need to um, get this top cage off. Normally I'd recycle the um, zip ties, but these guys here, a couple of them cracked being out in the sun, so I don't think they're the best UV resistant ones. I've got a couple more over on this side under all this somewhere. One there, another one up the back here with the asparagus. And we can try and take this off. I have a feeling it might actually pull out some of the sweet potatoes as well. There we go. So there we go, folks. That's pretty much all um, it. Now all I need to do is find these sweet potatoes. But before I do, I need to show you something. I'm just going to grab the phone camera. So this is what the sweet potatoes have done out the front of the property. They've grown through the fence here. And I dare say, if let go, they'd probably... Um, set down roots and everything out the front here. So these guys obviously need to be pulled off and tidied up a bit. So just to give you a bit of a look at the bed, uh, this is where the first one was planted out, just down here in this corner, next to an old, um, old last season's, um, not last season, just been the seasons before Rosella. I just left the roots in the bed here. I popped it down here, and as you can see, I've got a root there. There's another small little root there. Oh, these sweet potatoes too, by the way, even though they're green on top, they're still fine. They're not like a normal potato. There's actually a few little roots down in there. And there's a couple over here. I actually harvested a couple from this spot the other day, or broke one off, actually. I got one and a half. And a few more over there. Another one over near the full pipe. It's a nice big one down here. It's got a bit of a split. But what I was surprised to see was these guys down here. We have a couple of escapees. And they're well and truly in the ground down here. Nice big size one there. Oh, and I just broke this one off. Oh no, it was just a root that came off the bottom. So a couple of nice size little uh, sweet potatoes there. So I'm going to set this um, phone camera back up. And we'll get the fork in and see how many of these sweet potatoes we can pull out. I'll just collect all the um, potatoes I've already pulled out first. Any of these are going to come out easy. Oh, he's coming out. Oh, wow. That's a nice size sweet potato. Even though it's got a few splits from being in there too long. And a couple more around the top here. I'm breaking a lot of them with the small ends. So I might just leave um, the thinner ones in there. We'll get them when we use the fork. A quick search around the top. Oh, wow. There's some more here. I mean, I, I can pop a link up there to the last time I grew these guys deliberately and we had a really pitiful harvest, but these guys are looking really good. And all I did was plant out two sections, by the way. Planted one in this corner here and one in that corner there. After um, old, while well, the Kajari melons were in here, actually. These guys here will probably have roasted tonight with... um. Either some Mexican mint style mints over the top or some terrazzo. Just while I'm digging these out, I get a lot of people asking me about how I cure our sweet potatoes now. Uh, due to our climate and the facilities we have on hand at the moment, it's not very easy for us to actually um, cure the sweet potatoes here. Maybe um, after Maybe after we renovate the property, we can have some areas that are set out a lot better for that sort of thing. But for now, yeah, we pretty much will um, leave them out to dry in the sun for a couple of days and then just pop them in the, um, the pantry. And they always tend to um, keep for um, a number of weeks, if not months. So we're not overly concerned about um, curing them. Well, I always find that eating them fresh is just as tasty as any that we bought from the shops that are presume, presumably um, cured correctly. I'm very impressed with what I've seen so far from two plants, considering we got next to nothing from the um, 
first time I planted these guys out. Mind you, I didn't grow them at the best time of year either. From memory, I planted them just before autumn. So it doesn't look like there's anything there. Next row. This bed too, I haven't um, watered for the last week. Just wanted it to dry out a little bit before I harvested. Doesn't look like there's much left in this middle section. Nope, nothing there. Now up to where I know there's going to be a couple. Try and excavate some of the soil out from around these guys. Some nice little group of them down here. This one's twisted and gone straight down. And this is the corner where they were all planted to begin with. And yeah, it doesn't look like there's any down here. So I've also gone through and collected as many of these um, thicker sort of looking roots as I can because I mean without a doubt there's some one I missed. Without a doubt we're going to end up with some volunteers in here but I would like to limit their numbers a little bit. Um, so I do think I've got enough time now to grow a brassica crop through before things get too warm and we end up with another flush of sweet potato. So anyway I'm going to brush off these sweet spuds and give you a bit of a gander. So there's a bit of a look of the harvest and um, I brought out my little luggage scales and we'll weigh them up in a tick. But just to um, show you the difference, these guys here were grown in the drier upper layer of the wicking bed and these guys here down towards the, uh, the wet zone. So these guys need to dry out a little bit. I don't like to hose the uh, sweet potatoes off, I just like, like to let them dry with a little bit of soil on them. I'd say a couple like um, ones around this size will uh, end up in the oven tonight uh, for a roast per, uh, sweet potato meal. Uh, these green bits as well by the way with the sweet potato as far as I know are not toxic like normal potatoes. Totally different family of plants. So if you do see green normal potatoes, um, don't eat them. But yeah, these guys, you should be all right. Um, we've eaten them in the past and I'm still here. Um, yeah, so uh, all in all, not a bad little harvest. They were in a little bit too long. Uh, they were only supposed to be in around about 16 to 18 weeks here in the subtropics. And I'd say they were probably uh, closest to probably about 24 weeks. So a little bit too long, but anyway, we've got a really nice harvest and we have picked out a few along the way. And the greens, we've harvested a load of the greens as well to pop into salads. A few folks who aren't aware as well, these, these uh, beds out the front here are wicking beds. You can see a little water port over there. And we've got some more over here where the, um, the cans haven't fallen off them. That's just to stop mosquitoes and other bits and pieces going down in there. But basically, I'll show you on this one. Uh, we have a water input there. It goes down into the base. And you might be able to see on the base of this one here, it's actually pretty full at the moment. We've had a bit of rain over the last couple of days and that's the overflow port. So the rain or the rain fills it up from the top or I stick the hose in the, um, the inlet and it overflows air once it's full. And then all the water just wicks up through the medium um, available to the plants whenever they require it. So that's basically how these little babies work. And yeah, they work really, really well with these sweet potatoes. So you can check out that little clip up there if you're interested. So what we'll do is, I'll try and get as much soil off of these guys as I can and just pop them in there. I haven't zeroed off the scales either with just the basket, but you know, we'll knock a couple of grams off for that. We'll pop these scales on. So now I've got this on, it's zeroed off. We'll try and lift it one-handed. It's not going to be that heavy. There we go, we'll, we'll call it around about seven and a half to seven, oh, seven and a half kilos which is that many pounds, which isn't really a bad harvest at all for two plants. So these guys are supposed to have a deep purple flesh, but we've never really had any um, form that deep purple coloring. Uh, they mainly get a little bit more oh, light purpley, violety pink like this one here. And that's pretty much all it. So I don't know if it's a, a lack of nutrient, but I mean, it's a decent sized spud, all of them are. So I'm pretty happy with the yield. Um, what I'll do is I'll, at the end of the clip, I'll pop a little bit of a look and how we use these guys um, as a meal tonight. And you can check that out if you're interested. Uh, the next harvest clip I think you guys will see will be the uh, ginger one in a week or so's time. And don't forget there's that competition running for that one. So check out the, uh, the link at the end of the clip here and also down in the description if you want to win yourself some root pouches. Uh, before I go though, I really do need to thank those awesome folks over on Patreon. Thank you very much folks helping to support the YouTube channel and me trying to build the website the aquaponics and backyard farm website. I really do appreciate the support and it'd be great if you could uh, pop on down to the um, description below the clip and click on the links to the super contributors, uh, the folks who go above and beyond and check out their um, backyard farm and homesteading Facebook pages and their websites and whatnot. 
Uh, also too, quick little spruiking for myself, sorry folks, I've got to do it, but our online store is up and running and we've got root pouches and uni seals and the Queensland Nut Buster and also an Amazon affili affiliate link if you want to go over and check out our new store. It's all sectioned off into aquaponics and root pouches and whatnot now. So the motorbikes have passed now. Don't forget to uh, check out the picture at the end of the clip. I do hope you're all well and happy and I will catch you next time. Cheers all, have a top one.